assist. Give him the notes and he will attend to you. Hurry up, hurry up. I have gotten the note from my father. Yes. yes. You see, I have heard repeatedly about this game. The terrain is rough, this is tough, and that is tough, whatever, but I am not a chicken hearted person, neither am I just a moralist. It's a lovely Saturday morning and you're welcome. We're back on your screens to bring you your number one authoritative panditry show, Simply Showbiz, right here on TV3. Now we take a look at some of the stories that, you know, that bothers around our entertainment industry and also take a look at some suggestions, some solutions to ensure that it gets better. Now today we're taking a look at two major stories, that is Ghana film industry challenges and opportunities for growth and also building a sustainable welfare system for entertainers. But before we take a look at all of that, let's uh, quickly run you through some of the stories that made headlines this week now. Um, we're starting with rather sad news where um, veteran actor Sam Ajitifi of Taxi Driver, known popularly as TT, has passed on. Now confirming the news, his son Ni Aj Ajitifi said, the late actor who was already battling diabetes and other ailments gave up the ghost on Friday, April 8. According to him, his father was unconscious when one of his siblings visited him on Friday. He added that Titi was rushed to a hospital at Dodowa in the Shai Osudoku district, but was pronounced dead on arrival. Samajete Fiu was in the news recently after he made public his financial uh, predicament. He said his survival hinged on the benevolence of people. Subsequently, the vice president and other philanthropists went to his ATT featured in projects like Papa Lassis, a stab in the dark, but is famed for his role in popular TV series Taxi Driver. Um, moving on to some other stories. Um, Ghanaian actress and movie producer Yvonne Nelson has advised up-and-coming movie producers to focus on churning out only original content. Now, in a post shared on Twitter, the Fix Us producer said, it gladdens her heart to hear people are developing interest and venturing into movie production, adding that this is what we need to grow the industry. Um, she, uh, there's a quote here that says, little advice for upcoming producers. I'm happy to hear people are developing the interest. This is what we need. I understand that I have inspired you, but please don't overcopy. Be a little original, a little. We need this industry to grow. I also move on to say that's uh, uh, Yvonne Nelson, the inspiring and coming upcoming movie producers to stay original now to some final story here co-star of popular tv series taxi driver miki osei berko known popularly as master richard has revealed some of the challenges the late summer jt few um went through while he was alive speaking earlier on midday live the renowned actor said the late tt was in dire need of help when he publicly Solicited for fans for his upkeep, he regretted how the late actor was bashed by a section of Ghanaians. Part of his life, we kept in touch and we spoke very often. He, he explained to me his predicament because he felt that I could understand where his thoughts are and what he's going to. A bit of the time that he was bashed in the media, I, I, when I got the opportunity, I tried to tell the people that the man is ill, you know, and needed support rather than the castigations here and there. But we've lost a teacher, we've lost a very great actor, and he had so much we couldn't even tap into. If we create opportunities for these people to earn enough, they'll be all right when they are at that age. But when there are no opportunities, and it comes back to the same media I keep talking about, I think that a lot of creative artists are going through situations because the economy is not structured to help them make anything of their creativity. And TT was an example. And that was Mickey Oseberg who's sharing his thoughts on issues concerning the late um, Psalm Ajitif. Now, before we go, I'd like to say a very big thank you to Melike Garments in Darkoman for my African Prince outfit. You can call her on 0243-224-809. Also on Instagram, she's known as at Millie underscore K underscore Garments. My name is Akofa. You're still watching Simply Showbiz. Now, when I return, I'll introduce my guest and then we begin the conversation. Keep watching. 
Welcome back. You're still watching Simply Showbiz right here on TV3. Now, today, I mentioned earlier, we're talking about two major topics. Now, we're starting off with the Ghana film industry, the challenges and the opportunities for growth. And later on, also, we get into the building of a sustainable welfare system for our entertainers. Now, joining me have this conversation is renowned filmmaker and CEO of Venus Films, Abdul Salam Mumini. Now, he is... Um, uh, he has... Had credit or you know that there this <laughs> anytime I hear this man's name, mm -hmm. I'm like Charlie. Let me just give you a little rundown Legendary. to him. So he has to his credit films such as God Loves Prostitutes, which starred Nollywood star Genevieve Inaji. Salam's Venus film production is responsible for the discovery of the likes of Van Vika, Jackie Alpia, Nadia Brari, and a host of others. Half of the movies you see growing up here, Venus Films Productions. That is a major deal. Now he's joining me in studio to have this conversation. And also we have Sammy Flex. He is um, the CEO of uh, Sammy Flex TV and also a showbiz analyst. Later on, we'll also join, be joined via Zoom uh, with uh, some of our guests as well. Uh, Miki Osebek, who is a renowned actor and filmmaker, will also join us via Zoom. Also, Daddy Bosco, the director of special projects of Musica, will also do same. Now, um, you're welcome, gentlemen. How are we doing? Thank you, Akofa. Yeah, I will actually so start with Abdul Salam. Know, right? Now, yeah. um, legendary. Legendary. <laughs> legendary. I won't, I won't lie about this. Now, you've been in the game over two decades. Let's talk about your experiences. I want to get a little bit of how being in the film space has been for you because from the dvd to the cassettes like you you have seen all the phases talk talk, talk to us about that when i came in i came in when the vhs was uh, mm. booming that by that time there's no vcd or dvd so we started a uh, distribution uh, movies into recording to DVDs. We own our own studio. So we buy the tapes and then get content from the producers. Some of the content also we produce it ourselves. And then uh, we record, promote it, and then release it into the market. The market was booming. Before you, before you release your movie in the morning, like Monday morning, by 3 a.m. you have queue. People wow. are waiting to see the movie. So if your target is to sell 20,000 to 50,000 copies that morning, the market is there. Mm. You can sell everything that you have on stock. Right. So what do you think has been it for you that you've been able to um, withstand the test of time all this while? What do you think has been that factor for you? Uh, I love uh, the work that I'm doing. Okay. You know, being on set with different people. I enjoy being on set with different people and bringing out a, a story that people will love and talk about it and enjoy it, inspire me more. So it keeps me going, yeah. Okay, I'll come back to you uh, uh, some more, but uh, l let me engage Sammy a little bit now. Uh, before we actually came on air, you you know you were had for having conversation with uh, you know Salam on yeah. the side. You I have know. seen his works over the period. Mm. What do you? He has given us a little background to what he believes has given him you know the top notch all this while. But mm. as a showbiz analyst, what do you think is that extra factor that has you know aided him all this while? All right, Akofa, thank you so much. And uh, first of all, let me say I feel so proud uh, sitting on the same show with Salam because over the years uh, when I started my Flex Entertainment newspaper, he was one of the guys giving us content mm. and money at the same time. <laughs> it wasn't content alone because almost every week he would release a movie. Before he released a movie, he would say, Sami, let a reporter come to my office, interview this actor. He'll give us synopsis. Sometimes we create stories, mm -hmm. uh, imaginary stories out of the synopsis he will give to us. So to me, Salam and his people, they are uh, people who have to be protected in the industry because when Salam goes on set, like he said, he loves working with people. Mm -hmm. If he goes on set, he feeds hundreds of people. From journalists, from uh, movie crew people, actors, if 
in fact, work capacity. All those people were fed by Salam. That is the Venus Films production. Right. So to me, his contribution to the movie industry, immense contribution. And anytime I hear his name, just as you said, I also feel so proud. It's just unfortunate, just as you said, when we were having conversations back there, it is so clear that things are not what it used to be anymore. And it is my prayer that this discussion will open up the avenues that we can put together to revamp the movie industry to make sure things will get back on its feet again. Because movies are uh, things people cannot stop watching. Mm -hmm. You and I, we love movies yeah. everywhere. Now, everybody is on the phone. Also we are on TV, we are too, online yeah. watching movies. The movie makers are there. They still have the experience. They still have the resources. Why are they not producing? I'm sure mm. that is the conversation yes, I am yes. really waiting to we, have we, here we will get on the into show. That because he shared some some insights off air as well. We were hoping that you know he brings a little bit of that on, yeah, on, on the show. Um, Salam, let me let, let's find out what you make of this. A lot of people have been arguing that um, the once vibrant movie industry is not like that anymore. Like the movie industry is dead. Do you, would you would you subscribe to such a notion? What do you think? Or what do you make of our system at the moment? The movie industry is not dead mm. because we are still producing movies. Okay. So it's just, um, it changes. Those days we depend on the DVDs. Let's say the VHS, VCD, you know, you, you see the buyers direct those days. The buyers are there. Okay. But now the buyers don't get access to the content. All right. Because we don't have the structures. The structures are not there. So now when you produce your movie and promote it, how do they get access to watch it? So when you the say platforms, the structures, the platforms yeah. are not there. Mm -hmm. We only have uh, two cinema halls. Let's say Silverbird, Accra Mall, and Westos Mall. Okay. So people in Kumasi, people in Tamale, people in Sunyani, people in Takradi, Cape Coast, how do they get access to the movie to watch? We don't have it. Hmm. Okay, how are you able to, to make it happen, to make it work for you then? Because we don't have the structures as you've mentioned earlier. So for your business and for um, the caliber of person you are, how is it working for you? So now we only have like, let me say, two platforms that we are selling content now. Okay. That's online platform and, and television stations. Okay. That's the only two platforms that we have now. Right. But those two platforms cannot generate much fun, even if you produce good content. Okay. Because how many people have access to internet? Mm -hmm. So people cannot get access to watching the content. So that's what is breaking down the movie industry. But the industry is still there. We are shooting, but we are not investing as much as before. Yeah. Okay. Right. I, yeah, I, can put yeah. this through. Um, I know most of these premieres they do outside of Accra. Mm -hmm. They do it at hotel conferences. They do it at some particular yeah, venues. venues. I don't know if they are not seeing those places useful for the premieres because you'll be here and you hear that maybe yeah, Takara, Akoma Plaza, yeah, yeah. they are doing some premier day. Why are they not utilizing yeah, so those? Yeah. So you, you, you are but in I the feel, game. I what do you like think? If one producer, you produce the content and then you have to take it out like rounds to other, pla other locations to premiere your movie. That's okay. too much for the producer. Oh. We don't have a distributor. Hmm. What we call distributor, we don't have it. Okay. But if the cinemas, let's say every region has a cinema, then the distributor comes in, take the movie from the producer and go and distribute to the cinemas. So you believe um, the cinemas are not being enough? It's one of the... At all. Okay. We only have two. We need like 15 to 20 cinemas. Okay. In the country. And you believe that will change the phase of A things? A lot. A lot. Okay. That when you know that, okay, I have this movie and it will go across the country to 15 to 20 cinemas... Mm. You are sure, hundred percent, that your investment investment will come out. Will come out. Yes. But boss, you've been in the game for for a while. You you hold some level of authority, if 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 I can put it that way. Have you engaged, um, you know, people in authority to to come up with these ideas that you suggested right now? The cinemas, and you know, making sure that there's structures so movie. 
content reaches, you know, the viewers or the or, or, or the the, call, the consumers. Uh, we might call to the government to look, or if the government cannot invest, he should look for more investors okay. to come and help the movie industry and build more cinemas. Because without the cinema, the producer cannot make it. Okay. Without hmm. the cinema, the producer cannot make it. So we will need some investors to come out and invest into the cinemas and they can make their money and then the producer also can make his money. Yeah. Mm. Well, some time back to the the the, the where um, you know I think during an election period like this, yes. uh, the the parties mentioned that they were going to build some film uh, village and and stuff like that. How do you think mm. you know um, pronouncements like that uh, will, will will be able to uh, you know help with the industry? Because uh, a lot of, a lot of people are still asking where is it? Has it been done yet? Are you are you ahead of it? But we don't need that. Okay. okay. We don't need that. And we don't even need money from the government. What we need is the platforms, like the structures, like the cinemas, where, you know, the producer invests his money. He can take the movies to the cinemas and break through, through that. But you don't need money from the government. A lot of people will, will, will disagree because there are some other um, people in the same space who are always calling for government to pump in money at the creative arts sector. Do you, do you don't agree? I disagree with that. Why, 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 why do you disagree? Why do we need money from the government? Or why do we need a film village for now? Okay, you have the film village. And then you don't have a distributor. Okay. So if you, if you shoot... How do you break? How do you make your money back? So I disagree on that, and I disagree on people saying government should give them money to produce movie. I disagree with that. <laughs> would Would you say that you know people calling for um you know the the, the film village in, in instance for it? Do you think that the government failed to consult some of the industry persons yeah, before I think, they came Yeah, up yeah, I it? think so. Okay. Because they have to look at the players in the industry who are doing very well and then find out from them what, what is the way forward mm. to build the industry and bring the industry back. But they did not get the right people to talk to. Mm. Yeah. Um, I want to find out, aside getting cinemas, what you think the way forward is. But let me quickly also uh, find out from Sami. You've, mm. been, uh, you know, you've been a showbiz analyst for a while, mm. and he mentioned that he believes that cinemas are the way to go so that movie makers can make their, 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 their money back. Mm. What, what, what do, you, do you think about this? Yes, um, I think I've spoken to not only Salam, mm. a couple of movie producers, Kofia Samoa, Secret Safo, uh, Peter Sedufia, and more of them, who are also on the same tangent as uh, Salam is telling us this morning that uh, they need the cinemas to, to before, because before at um, Oprah Square, they had particular days that you'd go and sell your CDs. Mm. And it was a market like a gold mine days for these guys. If it is Wednesday for, say, Venus Films, you go there and in a week you can sell about 100,000 copies. Right. They are no more there because people are no more using their desk. Mm -hmm. They need their cinemas. But when he said they cannot go to the rest of the regions, I was also asking myself that. There are event promoters almost in every region, mm -hmm. like big time event promoters. We might not need Salam himself and his team from Venus Films to travel around the uh, yeah. country to do these premieres. Can they get some representatives? Can they get these event people, those who do the constant? They are the same people who can promote these movie premieres. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if Salam can sit in the office and look around for the 16 regions, some event people in all yeah. the 16 regions, when the movie comes, can he do something with them? So they can be in, say, Tamale, um, Bolgatanga. They can be in Volta region. Today is the premiere of a new movie from Venus Films. Can they do it from their centers? Mm -hmm. Because if they do it from their centers and they get some good number of people, I'm sure it's also cushion him yeah. to get his returns back. I don't know if that is possible because for the cinemas, that is what is happening now mm -hmm. around the world. They will tell you box office box will then give you yeah. the money before you go and consider because TV stations are not paying much. How, how much can the TV station pay? How much are they even making? Most, of, most many TV stations. Well, are it's not a even. bargain, so they they, they bargain no, but, what they, they, they But can the afford. money they will pay them cannot even take care of their maybe post production activities. It can't. Okay. If beyond paying actors and all, it can't. So the TV stations cannot solve their problems. And of a, uh, we were also talking about the online people, and he said most of the online people they consider numbers from the region the movie is coming from. 
So if, for instance, you're a producer in Ghana and the movie is coming from your country and they realize that, okay, on their app, you are not very um, dominant Active there. You are not yeah. dominant there. They would not give you big money. Mm -hmm. They still would want to give you to say the US market, the Nigeria market, those who have the numbers. And mm -hmm. in Ghana, the internet penetration rate is not very huge like that. That is why if they get the cinema and maybe out of the 16 regions, they're able to pack, say, 200, 200 in every region. Mm -hmm. Just count the numbers. Right. I'm sure they can get something back. Okay. But I still think there should be ways out. Yeah. Can they get uh, a rest? That, that's, that, that, that's true. Um, do 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 you think that um, I, I wanted to to uh, get your thoughts on this one that you have mentioned that we need cinemas aside the cinemas what else do you believe um, will help our film industry come back to its glory or pick up from where it left off? I'll still come back to the cinema. Okay. <laughs> cinema, yeah, cinema, because, cinema. Because you know those days, let's say those days we have ten regions. When you are releasing your DVD or VHS, all the regions. We have people coming from the region, representing from every region, mm. that comes to Opera Square. Okay, Salam, I need 200 copies. I need 500 copies. So you know your movie is going out. If all the regions are taking 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 copies, you have 10,000 copies. You mm -hmm. sold 10,000 copies. Okay. I get that. I get yeah. that. Okay. So Salam, why are you guys not using those who are coming to um, Opera Square to take the CDs, the thousand copies? Why are you not using them still to do the premieres in their regions? Is it no, not the same? No, they are not there. You can't find them anymore. They They've moved there. to other, other business. So let's look for other people because they are yeah. event promoters in every region. Because they feel like now, okay, Sabi, let's say now you are in Tuck Ride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to come to me. Salam, I want to distribute your movie in Tuck Ride. Mm -hmm. You don't expect me, the, the producer, okay. to give you money to go and promote the movie and even invest into the premiere again. Oh. So sometimes you might invest into the You are not there. And then you invest in the premiere. Like, what happens? Then he will tell you, oh, after calculation, you didn't make anything. Mm. Mm. So tomorrow, can you go back and invest? No. You cannot. Mm. Mm. Right. Sami, let, let me um, uh, come back to you on this one. So with your engagement with some of these creative arts, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, people or entertainers, mm -hmm. do you, have you encountered a lot of them giving you their thoughts on the film village? Um, for the film village, many people think that it is one of those government promises. And, you know, when it comes to government promises, um, you cannot be so sure whether they will deliver or not. Just that, once again, I've also heard some things are ongoing, uh, whether they are going to complete it today or tomorrow. I cannot be so sure. But then you and I, we have been following government activities. What is on their priority list? You know very well that showbiz is not major yeah. on their priority list. So even if they have to take care of free education before um, 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 the movie village or the film village, they will take care of that because mm. that is on top of their priority. That yeah. is their campaign. They are not talking about film village in their campaign. They are mm -hmm. talking about free SHS. Free yeah. So if you are to rely on them, then it means that we are lost to start with. And again, Salam said something. Give us the film village. After producing the movie, where are we taking it to? Mm -hmm. To our homes? Mm -hmm. How many of us? Um, maybe my house, a family of about six or seven. Your house, maybe yeah. more or less. How we cannot satisfy the returns from uh, just getting the movies into our homes. We need the movies to go to the millions of people. Like, look at Ghana. Say 35 million people put out a movie and get just one million people to watch in Ghana. You are done. If right. you produce a movie and you get just one million people to watch here in Ghana, what is your problem? Mm. You are done. You don't okay. need anything to go on again. You okay. make your money. The next moment, you are going on set again. So I think I agree. Uh, for Salam, give him just money to produce. He might not need the film village. Even here, this studio, Salam mm -hmm. can make so much magic in just this small studio to produce a movie that you will not even know. Yeah. Look at the number of stars he's put out. He yes. did not take them yes. to um, the Venus proper to do the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he shot all the movies yeah. here on Earth yeah. Ghana. Yeah. So I think if he is in it and he says they don't need the film village, government, please listen to them. They don't need it. Like I said in my earlier submission, Salam has fed hundreds of people. Now all these people are jobless. I know camera people, most of them, they are jobless. If Salam goes to set today, 
they also get something mm. to do. And it will mm. reduce unemployment rates right. in Ghana. Right. Well, we're still trying our best to get uh, Peter Sedufia. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we'll be interacting with him via Zoom as well. So the moment we get through to him, we will engage him as he comes on. Um, let's also take a look at some of the opportunities for up and coming, you know, filmmakers. You have been in the game for a while. I'll always, uh, you know, refer to that when 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 I'm interacting with you. But um, do you do do you think what do you think these young people can look out for so they can position themselves to make use of these opportunities? Yeah, the industry is still there, and there are still other platforms that are buying content. Mm -hmm. But you just have to. Before you invest, you do have to do a little research about where you are putting your investment into to make sure that when you invest your money, you, 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 you make it back. Okay. But the industry is still there. I'm still producing. Mm -hmm. and as I'm talking to you now, I'm still on set. I'm still shooting. So the business is still there. It's been a while we, we you know, saw your movies. Are you, you're not producing in Ghana, giving us content in Ghana anymore? Well, I produce every month, but uh, my target is not... Like, let me say, where, where do I set the movie here in Ghana? Mm. Where do I say? But there are other platforms that we shoot for. Yeah. Now, now we have, let's say, Rock, Rock TV uh, is buying content. We have Aquaba Magic, they are buying content. And these uh, are not Ghanaian platforms? They are not Ghanaian platforms. Okay. Apart from those two platforms, I don't see any television station today who is <laughs> buying content that you can produce and say, okay, I'm going to sell my movie to TV3. I'm going to sell my movie to Joy Prime. How, mu how much would they pay you? How much would they pay you? But if Aquaba Magic agree with you, say, oh, when you produce, I'll buy it, this amount, you know, it's a, a South African company. Okay. And if Rock Studio uh, accepts your, uh, your script and, and wanted to buy your movie, you know that, okay, they're also foreign company and they, they're going to pay mm. you much better but even them alone how much would they pay you right it's not much to produce a good content because to produce a good content you might spend like roughly between hundred thousand Ghana cities oh. and they are not buying content up to hundred thousand mm -hmm. Ghana cities so mm -hmm. where would you produce where do you take it mm -hmm. I see so before you produce, you have to let them be part of it mm -hmm. and let them know how, much, know how much are they going to buy the content before you produce. Mm -hmm. Because if you produce a good content today, you might not have where to sell it. So your money will just lock up somewhere. Mm. Okay. Well, um, we, we, we've been able to uh, raise Peter Sedufia on the line. We'll also engage him uh, br uh, briefly. Hello, Peter. Can you hear me? Hello, Peter, can you hear me? Hello? Peter, you're welcome to Simply Showbiz. If you can hear me, um, say hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we're still having some slight challenges, mm. but the moment we're able to raise him, we'll engage him. Yeah. He's actually also a director and writer known for works such as Kitty King, um, side chick gang, um, aloe vera, just to name a few. I understand he's on. Peter, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning. Now I'm fine. I'm fine. How nice one. So, Peter, on March 4, you posted on fo uh, Facebook, quote, first film festival jury duty. Look, so African film festival. I hope I got the pronunciation right. Um, you said Egypt at uh. Luxor Africa Film Festival. You've been back for a while now. How was that experience for you? Thank you so much. I would like to say a good morning to your viewers. I sincerely apologize for that. I didn't make the studio. I was too much to your eyes. It was it, it, it fun, of course. Um, that was my first time being a, a film festival jury. It has always been me. I uh, submitted my film for people to judge and award or decline to award. So it was it is. But that was my first time seeing other people's film and also be part of the decision making to uh, determine a winner and, and uh, a second runner up or whatever it is. It was fun. It was a new experience for me because I got to understand other film makers' perspective and the depth of their film and how we should put into consideration other aspects of film making mind making their film. I think it gave me a better understanding than just being a filmmaker. 
Right. So a lot of people would want to know how you found yourself on that platform. Yeah, we know you were a big man and all of that. But can you walk us through how you, you know, you made your way to be part of the jury uh, this time around? All right. I, I, of course, I'm not a big man. I'm, I'm not <laughs> trying to be a big man. <laughs> and so, so in 2017, I submitted my first film that she took it to the film Libra African Film Festival. So it won the special jury prize. Uh, for the night, and since then, I think that um, when they, I don't know how they go about their selection, but I'm sure they look back and remember that uh, the once upon a time had a celebrity who got his film, and they like the film sort of. So let's invite him to come and help us select like the next uh, winning film. So I, I think maybe that's what went through the uh, education. I don't know. I was just sent an, an email. We invited to be uh, a dream member. That was in the end of in November, November 2021. So, yeah, it's been a good Okay. And um, Peter, so we would like to, um, you know, engage you on this side of the conversation where we're talking about the Ghana film industry, the challenges and the opportunities for good. Now, earlier in studio, we were talking about, um, you know, moving forward, what some of the things we can look at now. Um, legendary um, Abdul Salam Mumini mentioned that he believes that we need cinemas in order to ensure that, you know, investors or filmmakers make, uh, you know, their monies back. What, 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 what do you make of this? Oh uh, yes, um, I, I agree with that assertion. I think that we need uh, what we need mostly is, is distributors. Uh, once you have a, a distributor, I think that we have to 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 win the game. Uh, the reason being that uh, there are a lot of the main filmmakers making films, making good films, as you say, but there is no one that says, "I like your film," and I'm taking it on to go and sell for you to go and distribute for you. I mean, that's something that. They have the salon women and the, the, uh, the size and the, what they're doing previously at Opera Square. You get my point? Where they will see a film and say, this film is beautiful, it's nice. So you, the door, go home and sleep. We will take the burden upon ourselves to market it for you and sell it so you make your money back and make another film. It's not like the film. Now, distributors are missing from the system. So every producer or director is now trying to sell distribute looking for someone to sell the film for them. And we let you end up not even finding someone within Ghana who will take the film to them. So we're not finding someone outside Ghana, either Nigeria, South Africa, or somewhere else to handle the distribution for us. I mean, that is one thing that we are, we are missing. And of course, uh, cinema cannot be left out because uh, that is where you make a lot of the money from. When mm -hmm. people that uh, live in the country, you make the film. That's like your backyard. The film is that better. And then really, you expect that a lot of your Indians will go and watch it. And if they are willing to go and watch it, there are no avenues, there are no stages, there are no cinema hall for them to go and watch it. Then, it means that you are still back to nothing. And so that's why we need a lot of cinema space. If, if you are doing a time of cinema release, there's two cinema in Kumasi, or actually for the start of the day, there's two cinema in Kumasi, there's two in Kaka, there's two in Kipko, there's, there's two in Accra, and things like that. And I release my film and film, they are all living in all these cinemas across the country. You can just imagine the number of uh, people that will enter, which is going to accumulate right. into, into, into uh, money for me. And that is missing. And so we just have to now rely on the the, 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 the little that is around you. Okay. And Peter, that is so I will... Peter, I want to also to uh, get your thoughts on this one. So a lot of industry players have expressed their concerns when it comes to the film village. Um, here in studio as well, we've also touched a little bit on it. But uh, from where you sit, what do you make of the conversation about uh, getting a film village, uh, you know, um, set for our film industry, basically? Do you think is um, 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 one in the right direction? Um, a film village idea is not, it's not a bad idea, but a person I think comes to, after the film village, when you make it from where do you go to show, where do you have to go Because the thing is, without a film village, people are making films anyway. Okay. Our only challenge is that we can't show it in, in many cinemas, but except the one that we have. And so if you put a film village and people are making, for instance, maybe like in a year, people are making films in Ghana, and there's no cinema to show, so when you create a film village, and I was able to make 200 films in a year. But the same, the same cinema is available to The same cinema that 24 is in and not to be used by 200 people. 
Okay, now you founded the Directors Call Workshop Series for Filmmakers in 2017. Uh, t tell me how, how, how that is going. Yeah, so, so, so the Directors Call has uh, different aspects. Some of them are uh, workshops, some are uh, script competitions, some are uh, invitations for writers to be hired on certain projects. And so the workshop is what we've not uh, done for some time now because of all of that. Issues that have got to do with uh, script writers, writers and things like that. We, we continue to do. Uh, I think almost every year we put up uh, uh, what do you call it? An advertiser for people to submit scripts and we reward the winners of the, the, the script about uh, 10,000 depending on which year it is and how the, the values, the monetary values uh, uh, remain. And so I think even last last year we did we did some for, for the, the script writers. Okay. Uh, we were looking for a couple of scripts and uh, money as people. Right. 10,000 for the script that they collected. Now, so, lastly, so lastly, let let me find out. Uh, you're working on a project. Can you just talk to me about that briefly? Yes, I'm currently working on a, a TV series. It's a sitcom called Thank you, Villa. Uh, it's going to be showing. So I call them and it's going to be showing on their channel. And so that's what I'm working on uh, at, at the moment. And so far, uh, it's been a, a happy, a happy working. Working uh, moment because of the cast and crew that we have on board who are very committed and educated. And uh, the show is in the, the premiere on our column and it's kind of want to see on the 17th of April, 2022. At this team. All right, Peter, thank you so much for speaking to us. We really appreciate it. Now, that was Peter Sedufia, director and writer known for, um, you know, films such as um, KTK, Saiche, Gang, Aloe Vera, and a host of others. You're still watching Simply Showbiz right here on TV3. Now, let me come back to my guests in studio. And mm. um, finally, before, we, you know, we, we, we wrap up to have uh, at the other side of the conversation, moving forward as, um, you know, the legendary person that you are, what would be your, your final take? Um, you know, what would you tell people in authority when it comes to our movie industry? What is that last word you you would hope that they would work on to ensure that we're moving forward with our film industry? I feel like, um, one, we don't even need a fund from the government. We don't need a film village for now. What we need is cinemas. When you have cinemas across the country, distributors might fall involved. So I'm pleading with the government to come in to invest into the cinemas, or it gets the government to find an investor who will come on board to build more cinemas so that the producers can push more movies and create more jobs for the youth. So we need the government to come on board or call the producers who you should call the producers who knows much about the industry mm. and have one and one discussion with them to see how best they can help the movie industry. Okay. Yeah. Fine, finally, from mm. yours, what's uh, I also wish that uh, beyond waiting for the cinemas, uh, they should not stop producing the movies because it is one of the ways Ghana is being entertained, or better still, the whole, the, the whole world is being entertained. So can they consider other avenues? Because now I hear they are even dealing with the airline companies. So, for instance, a movie producer can get some of his movies to any of these major airline operators here in the world. And uh, they're also playing well. That is what I'm gathering. Mm. So, beyond waiting for the cinemas, as Salam is requesting for, in fact, as I'm here, some movie producers watching us, Coach Kuli and his people, they're also telling me they agree with Salam with okay. that they need the cinemas more than the film village. But before the cinemas come in, can we also consider other distribution channels so they don't become idle mm -hmm. for the actors to also go hungry? Because hungry. it is the reason most of them are slain now, especially the actresses. I will, let's, yeah. Um, so we have Daddy Bosco <laughs> joining us via Zoom. Now, um, Daddy Bosco, if you can hear me, good morning. How are you doing? 
Good morning. I'm good. I'm good. Nice. So you were part of the team that put together Music Guest Amway. That is the Asian Musicians Welfare Fund. Um, it has supported a lot of our music heroes for a while now. Share your experiences with us while working on uh, such a project. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you for this opportunity. The issues of uh, welfare for our aging and tennis um, is of grave concern. And I think um, this exercise will help us come up with um, solutions to this uh, perennial problem. Um, I'm with a with vision by Isa uh, Saiku for when he became the president of the Musicians Union of Ghana. And um, the whole idea was to set up a fund that would be able to provide some sort of um, um, for our aging musicians and for incapacitated musicians, the fund would be able to support them. So what we did was um, once we set up the fund, we established the musical grand ball, the presidential grand ball, mm -hmm. which is an or which was an annual event that sought to raise funds um, put into the Amwef um, project. So. I'm sure viewers will recall the various uh, grand balls we've had from 2013. The last one was um, in 2019, um, and that marked the birthday of His Excellency the President, Anaku um, Dankwa the, the grand ball before the last one we did, that was where Honorable Kenna Japong. Um, uh, made a promise. He played ten thousand CDs every month for musicians, and then uh, I think I'll say it that Ken was able to deliver on that promise religiously every month. He'd write a check, and that check would be disbursed to the musicians who, and um, they they actually were selected and presented with awards at that grand wall. So Ken said, look, in appreciation of their contribution to the industry, it will put them on that pension. Okay, now, Daddy, while. Daddy Bosco, let me also um, get your, your, your take on this one. So how do you think this laudable initiative can, you know, be replicated in other uh, uh, spaces of the creative arts? The good news is that um, the creative arts agency uh, or the creative industries agency bill has been passed. We're currently working on the legislative instrument to give wheels to that um, whole vehicle. When that comes into play, the agency will play a leadership role in coordinating the affairs of the various um, individuals and associations in the space. My belief, my sincerest belief is that with the leadership of the agency, we will be able to replicate this fund and ensure that we have a fund that will cater for all our aging musicians. There's two ways we can do this. Once the creative um, agency is in place, they can ensure that all working musicians, all working creatives, contribute something into the fund. Of course, there's a provision for the fund to levy uh, products sold in the creative art space, like we have a tourism levy. If that becomes operational, we're believing that that fund can be um, adapted to sort out our aging musicians, our aging entertainers, and our aging artists. Um, okay. But that will take the buy-in of the various individuals and associations. It, 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 it's not rocket science. I believe it can be done. Okay, so your final comment. I'll take your final comment. So um, aside this, um, you know, um, um, uh, fund that you've put aside, a lot of, every single time we hear uh, conversations where a lot of our, our entertainers have, uh, you know, are struggling with finances, do you believe this is, one of the ways that would gradually eradicate that completely. So it will not eradicate that um, completely. What, uh, and that's one of the things that we're believing the Creative Arts Agency will do, would be to provide financial um, knowledge to our young musicians. You see, the interesting thing is that the industry is changing. And so 
artists and creatives have the ability to earn even more than in the past. And so they should be able to provide for their futures better. Okay. In the past, the industry isn't as lucrative as this. We need to put that in perspective. All right. Thank you so much, Daddy Bosco, for spending some time with us. We really appreciate it. So Daddy Bosco is the director of special projects at Music. Also, thanks going out to Abdul Salam Mumuni, renowned filmmaker, CEO of Venus Films, and also to uh, Sami Flex, showbiz analyst, CEO, um, uh, also Sami Flex TV. He's a showbiz analyst, CEO of Sami Flex TV. And also, thanks going out to Peter said if you're a celebrated film producer, CEO, old film productions, and thanks going out to the entire team concept for rights and after everyone behind the camera and all those giving me you know yeah that the, the comments in my ears thank you so much and i also like to say a very big thank you to uh millie k garments for my outfit call her 0243 224809. My name is Akofa on Twitter and on Instagram. It's at I am Akofa underscore. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday.